Hello and welcome to This Week in Animal Rights. In this episode, we look back at the week of January 20th, 2020. These are some of the stories we are following. Legislation has been introduced in Virginia that would require people convicted of animal cruelty to have their names and photographs on an animal abuser registry. The information would be made available to shelters, rescue groups, pet stores, breeders, and the public. Despite false promises that new reforms would end the era of horses dying at the track, three more horses have been killed at Santa Anita in three days, bringing the death toll in the last year to over 40. And that's just one track. Over 600 horses were killed on American racetracks in 2019, with over 50,000 more going from the racetrack to the slaughterhouse and ending up on dinner plates in Europe and Asia. Garden Grove, California has passed an ordinance criminalizing compassion, by making it illegal to feed community cats or trap them for purposes of sterilization and return. In a rebuke to Delta Airlines, which discriminates against dogs they identify as pit bulls, even when they are certified service animals, the U.S. Department of Transportation is moving ahead with a regulation that would force Delta to stop doing so. Similarly, it's been illegal to live with a dog identified as a pit bull in Denver, Colorado since 1989. But that may also soon change with a proposed law to allow them to be adopted from local shelters. It is not a full repeal of breed discriminatory legislation, as other cities have done recently, but it is a step in that direction. Earlier this week, a city council committee hearing the bill voted unanimously to approve and forward it to the full city council for a final vote next month. And finally, a federal court this week ruled that a Kansas law making it illegal to film animal abuse on factory farms violates the First Amendment. It's the fourth state to have its agricultural gag law struck down as unconstitutional. The laws are designed to prevent exposure of cruelty in order to prevent reform. Thankfully, in the last year, courts have consistently ruled on First Amendment grounds in favor of advocates for reform and against factory farms, regressive pound managers, others like PETA that also engage in killing, and public officials who tried to cover up that killing. That's it for this week. Visit NathanWinograd.com to subscribe to my YouTube page and for more information about my film and books on the no-kill movement and other animal rights topics. To be a part of the discussion, please join me on Facebook.